Welcome to the Bladed Tech Channel's 51st edition in our series discussing events and innovation, science, technology, and space exploration. Just over six months after astronauts Hopkins, Glover, Walker, and Noguchi lifted from the Kennedy Space Center's historic launch Complex 39A and the SpaceX Dragon 2, number C207, atop a Falcon 9 rocket, the Crew-1 astronauts disembarked from the International Space Station on May 1st, 2021. The May 2nd splashdown of the Dragon 2 capsule marks the end of just the second American manned mission since 2011 and the first of 2021. The mission represents another huge success for NASA's commercial crew program, which provided much of the funding and guided the developments involving the crewed version of SpaceX's Dragon capsule. NASA certified the craft to regularly carry humans to and from the ISS after the end of the Demo-2 mission in 2020, starting with the Crew-1 mission that launched on November 16th. The Crew-1 spacecraft was commanded by Space Force Colonel Michael S. Hopkins. Hopkins was a member of the Expedition 38 crew on the ISS during 2013 and 2014. Hopkins did not participate in the space shuttle program, the only aspect of the space transportation system put into operation. The shuttles were retired in 2011 and ostensibly replaced with the Artemis program, which is yet to launch into space. SpaceX's commercial crew spacecraft has stepped in to fill the gap. U.S. Navy Commander Victor J. Glover was the Crew-1 pilot. Glover and Hopkins were joined by Mission Specialist Soichi Noguchi from JAXA and Shannon Walker from NASA. Glover also missed the space shuttle program and was in space for the first time. Noguchi flew on the shuttle Columbia in 2005 for the STS-114 mission and joined the Expedition 22-23 crews on the ISS in 2009, a rotation that saw visits from the shuttle's Endeavour, Discovery, and Atlantis. Walker joined the Expedition 24-25 crews on the ISS in 2010. Crew-1, originally designated USCV-1 or United States Crew Vehicle Mission-1 by NASA, was initially announced in November of 2012, with launch date set for November of 2016. In April of 2013, it was announced that the launch would be delayed by one year to November of 2017. It was then delayed into 2019 and 2020, pending the success of the uncrewed and crewed demonstration missions, respectively. Following the Demo-2 flight, Crew-1 was tentatively scheduled for September of 2020, but was delayed again due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic then again because of concerns about an issue with the gas generators on the Merlin 1D engines that power the Falcon 9 Block 5 rockets SpaceX uses to lift the Dragon capsules to orbit. Hopkins, Glover, Walker, and Noguchi boarded the C-207, named Resilience by the crew, and undocked at 8.35 p.m. Eastern Time, dropping into a lower orbit than the ISS in order to prepare for re-entry. After a deorbiting burn, the trunk section containing power modules was jettisoned, where it would eventually burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. The crew module began breaking at about 2 a.m. and then re-entered the Earth's atmosphere about 2.44 a.m. Parachutes were deployed at 2.52 a.m. and the splashdown occurred at 2.56 a.m. in the Gulf of Mexico. It was the first nighttime splashdown of a U.S. crewed spacecraft since Apollo 8's return on December 27, 1968, in the Pacific Ocean. Here is Walker's comments on the night splashdown. Yeah, I would say, in really from our standpoint, it really wasn't much of an extra challenge. Um, our activities were exactly the same, and we had lights on inside the capsule, so it was it was most of the time until we turned them out. But <laughs> um, so it was no our activities were no different and I think the hard part or the harder part was on the search and rescue team that had to find us in the dark and they had practiced that a lot so they were very well prepared. I, I think um, if it had been daytime it would have been exactly the same for us. Yeah. Once the Dragon 2 was on the deck of Go Navigator, the four astronauts disembarked from the capsule and underwent medical checks. From there they then flew on a helicopter to the mainland where they boarded a NASA aircraft for the flight back to their home base in Houston. Go Navigator, which is primarily used for fairing recoveries, also recovered the Demo-2 craft. The ship is owned and operated by Marine Fleet Specialist Geis Offshore, who is a SpaceX subcontractor. 
Some watchers of the return to Earth of the Demo 2 mission became aware for the first time that the Dragon 2's re-entry is more like an Apollo capsule from the 1970s than the space shuttle of the 2000s. The space shuttle looks somewhat like an airplane because it was essentially an unpowered glider which would descend through the atmosphere and gradually glide back down to Earth, borne on wind currents. Here are Noguchi and Walker's comments on the differences in re-entry and landing on the Dragon 2 capsule versus the Soyuz capsule and the space shuttle. I guess I can start the... Uh, uh, there, are, there are some differences. It's not uh, necessarily significant. Um, I would say the G-loading profile that we see is different for each one. Uh, neither one's better or worse, but uh, they're just different. And then coming home, it's the same thing. The G-profile is different. Um, when the parachutes come out, is a bit different. And so you spend less time under a parachute on the Dragon than you do under the Soyuz. Uh, landing in the water was interesting because none of us really knew what to expect. But I would say from my standpoint, it felt a little bit softer than landing on land. Um, and then having the rocking motion after you land in the water. I think we got very lucky with sea states. It could have been a lot uh, more dramatic than it was. So uh, some subtle differences, but uh, a lot of similarities as well. Well, shuttle Soyuz Dragon, it's a good question. It's hard to compare. Of course, for the impact-wise, uh, the shuttle is hard to beat. Uh, my case is uh, Colonel Irene Collins. Kiss landing, and it's very soft. But the people tend to forget that after the main wheel touchdown, we have a pretty slamming motion of the nose wheel touchdown. So uh, that's actually uh, not trivial. Uh, Soyuz, of course, it's uh, like a crash into the ground. For this one, I would say it's uh, very uh, benign and uh, almost a touchdown. So uh, I really like it, and uh, impact was very very minimal. And uh, right after. Uh, splashdown, we feel the wave motion. That is, yeah, we are come back to Earth, yeah, the water <laughs> planet. And this is exactly as uh, forecasted, like a five second period. Mm -hmm. And I feel it. So that's a yeah. great feeling, yeah. which we don't have for the 167 days. Yeah. Currently, only SpaceX has been certified for manned spaceflight, as Boeing's Starliner capsule has been delayed once again to the late summer, at the earliest for its second unmanned demonstration flight and the Orion capsule of the Artemis program is not expected to undergo a manned flight until November of 2021 at the earliest. Orion is not designed for docking with the ISS, but rather for lunar missions that would dock with NASA's Lunar Gateway, Orbital Moon Space Station, that is planned. There has been some speculation that SpaceX's Starship interplanetary craft will be able to dock with the ISS, and indeed SpaceX has made it clear it plans to eventually phase out the Dragon series in favor of Starship. However, NASA has not contracted with SpaceX for a Starship ISS mission, choosing instead in April of 2021 to contract for a demonstration manned lunar landing mission with Starship. SpaceX's main focus for Starship is Mars exploration and is currently planning an unmanned mission in 2024 and a manned mission in 2026. Crew-3 will fly a new Crew Dragon spacecraft currently under construction, while Resilience is refurbished for the Inspiration-4 private mission scheduled for launch in September. Crew-2, which was brought to the ISS on Dragon C-206, is still in orbit on the station. Crew-3 will bring astronauts Raja Chari, Thomas Marshburn, Matthias Maurer, and Kayla Barron to the ISS to relieve Crew-2 in October of 2021. Mission Specialist Baron occupies the fourth seat of the capsule, which was originally reserved for a Roscosmos cosmonaut. Roscosmos and NASA have not been able to agree upon a barter seat exchange arrangement. Inspiration 4 is a planned SpaceX Crew Dragon mission to low Earth orbit, operated by SpaceX on behalf of Shift for Payment CEO Jared Isaacman. Isaacman will be the mission commander and will be joined by passengers Haley Arsenault, CN Proctor, and Christopher Sabrowski. None of the four have space experience. Arsenault is a physician's assistant at St. Jude's Children Research Hospital. Proctor is a geology professor at an Arizona community college. And Sombrowski is a Lockheed Martin data engineer and Air Force veteran. Inspiration 4 will not dock with the ISS. Now that the Crew-1 mission is in the history books, what do you think of Dragon 2's inaugural operational mission? 
Will SpaceX's success and manned space exploration supersede Boeing's Starliner and the ULA Orion's capsule in manned Earth orbit supremacy? Let us know by dropping a comment below. We hope you have enjoyed this 51st video short about space, science, and tech on the Bladed Tech channel. If so, click that like button. We hope you have been enjoying our content. Have we earned your subscription to our channel? If yes, and you have not yet taken the opportunity to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. You can always unsubscribe and subscribing is free. Links to some of our most recent episodes can be found in the description section below. You can peruse our entire 250 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. We announce all new videos on our microblogging accounts, which are listed below, as well as in the community feed for this channel. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to RetroTech and Innovation Documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. And gameplay recordings can be discovered on the Bladed Tech Gaming Channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed and Minds page, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed and where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.